my name is Caroline, welcome back to my channel. I'm a physics lecturer at a UK university. This week, I think we should probably open the week with a conversation about effective study communications. Not a catchy title, but I think it is an important topic. Um, I hope wherever you are in the world, you're safe and you're well. Um, I know it's difficult to try to work on academic studies when you're in a different environment and you're taken away from all the things that you thought were going to be happening this semester. And I think that makes it really important that we communicate with each other in a smart and effective way. Um, and I guess one of the most important communications you're going to be having is that between yourself and your lecturer or your supervisor or your academic mentor. And my tip here is to try to make those communications, now that you're having to do them via virtual chat room or via email, try to make them as focused as you possibly can. I guess what I mean by that is it's, it's fine to go to say to um, an academic or your supervisor, I'm stuck, I don't understand this. But the problem with, if, with doing that is that the supervisor might start giving you lots of advice that you actually already know. You know, if somebody says to me I'm stuck with topic A, I can start telling them stuff about topic A that they actually already understand. There's just a specific part of topic A that they don't get. So I think if you can, try to be as clear as possible. So maybe if you're doing a mathematical derivation, you could say I understand all of it until the integral and that's when I get stuck. Because that means your supervisor has a real clear point to dive in and try to help you. And that's a really important with computer coding. So if you've got a computer code and you've got all the lines of code, try to debug it as much as you can. So put like hello world statements in or hi statements or something, because it means you can run the code and you can see how far it gets before you hit the problem. And again, that will really help with the person. If you can say my code runs until line, I don't know, 284, that means that the person then helping you will know exactly where to dive in and which bit of your code to look at. And I guess in an ideal world, of course, we'd all be doing our communications well in advance of any deadline, and that's not the real world at all. Uh, I have deadlines where I'm having to ask people things at the last minute, and I'm sure you do as well. But what I would say is if you're doing communications and it's relating to an assessed piece of coursework or an exam coming up, try to ask those questions as far in advance as possible because it gives time for the academic to respond to your question and it gives time for you to take their, their response and then use it and incorporate it into your studying. The other thing, of course, is if you're asking an academic a question about an assessed piece of coursework, they actually might not be able to answer you. So sometimes students ask me something and actually I can't tell them the answer because that is part of the assessment. So don't necessarily think that your tutor's being unfriendly. It just might mean that they're not actually able to help you out on that particular point because effectively it's part of the test. Um, so alongside talking to your academic supervisor um, or your mentor or your tutor, I think it's really important as well to stay in touch if you can with kind of classmates or your colleagues, your, your friends on the class. Um, I know Study With Me's are really popular on YouTube. I can kind of see the appeal where you log in and you work at the same time that somebody else is working. I can see how that would make you motivated if you're working and then somebody else in your group is working, you kind of keep each other going throughout that study period. However, I would say be careful with group study and fooling yourself into thinking you know something when you actually maybe don't. Um, so we've, we've all had this where you've gone in and you've been chatting to your friend and you're working through a question to practice it and your friend goes, yeah, yeah, let's answer it by doing X, Y, Z. And it's so easy to think, yes, that's exactly how I would have answered the question if I'd been doing it by myself independently in an exam. And it's not always the case. So I think if you're actually practicing exam papers, working through them by yourself is the best way to know what you know and what you need to probably do a bit more revision on or brush up on before going into that exam. So yeah, independent working, I'd definitely say do that with exam papers. And obviously sometimes you're going to have to work in groups. So I'm the module lead of a, a group project at the moment and the students are working together in groups. Um, and obviously that's part of their, their class assessment. So you've got communication with your academic supervisory team, communication with your classmates and admin communication. I, I suspect you might have had to move out of any university owned accommodation. You've probably got payments that you're having to sort out, whether you're having to pay the rent still, whether you can stop paying the rent, insurance concerns, concerns with student finance in general, 
anything that's kind of admin related, stay on top of that communication because you don't need a layer of admin worries adding to what's already a complex and difficult situation. So yeah, admin communication is important to keep on your to-do list of things to sort out. And then finally, just work out when actually you want to turn your communications off, right? So if I'm doing a piece of marking or maybe I'm writing a journal paper, I'll turn my emails off and I'll put my phone out the way because I don't want to get distracted for that period of time. And most emails can wait an hour or two, maybe even a day or two before you reply to them. So don't feel that just because somebody's emailed you or phoned you, you have to immediately respond. Yes, there will be occasional emails and calls that you do have to immediately reply to, but if it's just a general chit chatty one from a friend, you know, you can leave that for 45 minutes and then message your friend back afterwards and say, sorry, I was working through a test paper to practice. Are you free for a chat now? Or even better, you can arrange times to call your friends because then you know you've got a time to work to. So that's something I've been doing is I've been arranging times to chat to my friends and I find it helps me be effective in my studying and my work because I know that in 45 minutes time or an hour's time, I'm going to have a chat and it's going to be nice and relaxing and nothing to do with university work. This week I've got some journal paper that I'm writing, so I'm doing some mathematical work on um, an equine problem, so that's going to be good fun. I'll be chatting to my PhD students and I'll be doing a bit of assessment prep for one of the modules I look after, so that's my week. I hope you have a good week and a good few days of activities to help keep you busy and focused. Um, good luck with any communications, remember to be effective and smart in the way that you communicate with your classmates and your academics, that will hopefully give you the most out of your chats with other people. And I'll be back on Thursday and we can chat some more about study motivation. But yeah, stay safe and I'll see you all soon. Oh, and yeah, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. It's so nice to see the kind of the academic group getting bigger. It's becoming a bit of an academic kind of team, which is really lovely. So I'll see you on Thursday. Look after yourself and happy communicating. Bye.